<laughs> Going there and seeing those kids and those mothers, that must have been heartbreaking. I mean, they have it a was, very tough time. It was, it was an eye-opener, to say the least. Um, you know, all my life I've always wanted to work with children. Um, education and healthcare are two things that I'm very, very passionate about. And um, my wonderful Aunt Bella has worked for Save the Children for 10 years, so her and I sat down and we decided, let's do a trip. They just need better healthcare, um, better health services, you know, better trained people. Um, you know, a lot of these places don't have access to vaccinations, um, and that's what they need. And when you were talking to the mothers, I mean, these the mothers who, I mean, some of the stories that I read, mm. you know, the mothers who'd already lost a child and then had another child who was desperately ill. Yeah. How do they cope day to day? I think it's terrifying. I think it's very, very difficult. I mean, it's quite remarkable when you're out there, the hope that these people have, you know, they're incredibly vibrant and they still have smiles on their faces every day, but then, you know, I spent afternoons and days with these people. I truly see what they were going through, and and that was really heartbreaking. But there is hope. There sure is. Hope. So what happened really with your mum? She came up really early this morning. I'm staying with my parents at the moment because my having a house refurb, and she came up and said, "I haven't slept all night because I'm so nervous for you this morning." And I said, "Well, thank you. Now I'm feeling absolutely <laughs> petrified. <laughs> that was the last thing I needed." Please tell your mother I hope it wasn't as scary <laughs> yeah. as she thought. No, it's been That's really so wonderful. But um, uh, now all the all the stuff that that's written. Do you get fed up when people talk to you about your sister? Because you're your own person. So when people always say, oh, let's talk about Cara, does that drive you mad? Well, not really, because, I mean, she's my baby sister, so I could sit here and wax lyrical about her until I'm blue in the face. But, um, you know, of course, she's, you know, the name on everyone's lips at the moment, and I'm just proud of her. I'm proud of her every day. It is extraordinary, though, how you, both of you and your family, it, the Instagram and all the other social media that, you, that you're on, is that just, is it just part of your life now? I think that, you know, it's so part of the industry. It's not really a life decision. It was more of a sort of, it's where the industry's heading and not just the fashion industry, but all the others, you know, there's, there's such a sort of need for it and you have to be sort of part of that. I'd be ignorant to sort of turn my nose up at it and say, I don't need it because that's where the world is heading in a weird way. It's social media, everyone's gone bonkers for it. And, um, but I enjoy, I enjoy the Instagram part. I love taking pictures. I'm really into photography, I'm all about visuals, so I, I enjoy it. How do you feel about the fame side of it, though, as well? You know, sometimes you do have moments where you're like, oh, God, you know, I, it does scare you, where you're like, when people know where you are. Um, and I am quite a private person, so there is a moment of that, but I just like to keep it as light-hearted and as, <laughs> sort of, as a positive space as much as it can be. That's a wonderful way to be, though. Well, I try to, yeah. <laughs> Lovely to meet you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. And say hi to your mum. I will do.